Hello everyone, let's go ahead and start off with quadratics. Now, what is a quadratic? Well, we have to first look at what polynomials are. And we're already familiar with some polynomials, like say, for example, 3x plus 2 and 2x squared plus 4x minus 1. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the, the, the quadratics in a particular frame of reference with regards to polynomial and the degree of the polynomial. So say, for example, if you have a degree 0 polynomial, then basically you have what is called a constant. Something like 3, it could be any number that you want it to be, so long as there is no variable, because this value would never vary, and thus it's called a constant. You also have things that are called degree 1 polynomials, like say, for example, x plus 2, and we call those linear polynomials. Okay, polygraphs are linear, linear equations or expressions. And then what we're going to come across now is the, the, the degree 2 polynomial, which are called quadratics. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the example here, what you should notice is that in the quadratic, you oftentimes have a constant term. You oftentimes also have a linear term, of course, because that's the degree 1 term. And then you also have the quadratic term, which is going to be the second degree term. Now, of course, in order for this to be a quadratic, it has to, have a, it has to be a degree 2 polynomial. So therefore, even if you had something that looked like that, just 2x squared, that would still be considered a quadratic, even though the constant and the linear term did not exist. Okay, so the most important thing about the quadratic is that it has to be a degree 2 polynomial. Now, let's go ahead and just take a look at that then. With the quadratic function, basically what we have is we have f of x, because it's a function, f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are basically going to be numbers, and we know that a cannot be equal to zero. And that's obvious, because if we eliminate this, it's no longer quadratic, it's going to be a linear function. So we can also go ahead and talk about the quadratic equation, and the quadratic equation is very much similar to the quadratic function, in the sense that your f of x is actually going to be equal to zero. And again, of course, a cannot be equal to zero. Now, the simplest quadratic function that you have and what we're going to do is we're going to call that the parent quadratic function, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later in subsequent chapters. But the parent quadratic function is just going to be f of x is equal to x squared, where the value of a is going to be equal to 1. There is no, b, there is no linear term and no constant term. Now, if we go ahead and analyze this particular function here, notice that the domain is x is an element of all reals. The range is y is greater than or equal to 0. It's symmetrical about x is equal to 0, in this case the y-axis. It has a vertex here at 0, 0, and in this particular case it's going to be the minimum value of the function. And all of these functions, all these quadratic functions, are going to be graphs of what are called parabolas, okay, or parabolic curves. So that's basically what it is, and where it fits within the polynomial scheme of things. Now, what we really want to focus on as well is how to solve quadratic equations algebraically. Generally speaking, there are three ways by which you can do that. You can either factor it by using the zero product property, and the zero product property states that AB is equal to zero if and only if A is equal to zero or B is equal to zero. So you factor the quadratic equation, uh, quadratic equation, and then you set each one of those factors to be equal to zero. You solve for each one of those factors separately. You can also go ahead and complete the square, and then you can also use the quadratic formula, which is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, and hopefully you have this memorized. Okay, so those are the three different ways that you can solve a quadratic equation algebraically. Now, how do you solve a quadratic equation graphically? Well, the main thing that you have to do is you have to find the x-intercepts, or where it crosses the x-axis of the quadratic function, which is f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? Now, the one thing that we want to do is we want to just make sure that people know how to actually complete the square. So I'm going to erase all of this here, and let's make sure that people know. Let's just show one example of completing the square. Now, with completing the square, there's many different ways by which you can do it, but let's just go ahead and show one way of doing it. So this is method 2, completing the square and trying to solve a quadratic equation algebraically. So let's just say, for example, we have 5x squared uh, minus 
minus 15x, minus 15x plus 2 is equal to 0. Okay? Now, I'm just going to show you one way. You can look at the book. The book also approaches it from a slightly different technique. Either one of the techniques are going to be valid. So I'm going to go ahead, first of all, and divide everything by 5 because I want to make sure that the x squared term, or my quadratic term, has a coefficient of 1. So if I divide everything by 5, then that means that this is going to be x squared minus 3x plus 2 fifths is going to be equal to 0. I'm going to move this onto the other side by subtracting 2 fifths from both sides. So x squared minus 3x is going to be equal to negative 2 fifths. Now notice I left a space here, and the reason why I left a space there is because now I want to complete the square on this side. And in order to do that, what I do is I take the coefficient of my linear term, which is negative 3 over 2, oops, oh, sorry, negative 3. I take that negative 3, I divide it by 2, and I square it. And I add this to this here and here. So what I do then is I add this negative 3 over 2 on the squared to both sides. Okay, and so notice that it's still the same equation because I'm adding the same thing to both sides of the equation. Now I can actually complete the square on this by actually making it a quantity squared. So this now becomes x minus 3 halves quantity squared. And that's why they call it completing the square. Okay, this is going to be equal to negative 2 fifths plus 9 over 4. Okay, now if I go ahead and simplify this side over here, this is actually going to have, uh, what is that? Let's see. That's going to be, uh, let's do it on the side here. This is going to be negative 2 over 5 plus 9 over 4. That's going to be negative 8 plus 45 over 20. So that's going to be 37 over 20. So this right here then is going to be 37 over 20. And now how do I go ahead and solve for x? Well, I just take the square root of both sides. Okay. This actually this becomes here by definition the absolute value of x minus 3 over 2 is equal to the square root of 37 over 20. So that means that x minus 3 over 2 is going to be plus or minus the square root of 37 over 20. So that means that x then is going to be equal to 3 halves plus or minus the square root of 37. Oops, sorry. The square root of 37 over 20. Okay, and then you can go ahead and do some of the simplification there with regards to the uh, radical. Now, of course, remember that this is really two different solutions. This is x is equal to 3 halves plus the square root of 37 over 20, or x is going to be 3 over 2 minus the square root of 37 over 20. Okay? So that right there is the process called completing the square. We just wanted to go through one of those just to make sure that everybody can do that. It's going to be very important that you can do that, especially for later sections within this chapter. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how you can solve. This should be review for most of you, or I should say all of you, uh, how to solve quadratic equations algebraically using those three methods, as well as trying to make sure that you can solve quadratic equations graphically. Okay, let's see how you do. We'll take any questions the next time that we meet in class. Okay, talk to you later. Bye-bye.